Hey folks, Arm and Hammer here, and you are about to enjoy a brand new episode of the Sand Podcast. If you're watching this, you may be wondering, why is he standing outside in the dark? If you're listening to this, you may be wondering, why does he sound like he's been gargling nails for the past few hours? Well, it's because I've been up for a very long time. It's the middle of the night right now, and uh, the Dubai CrossFit Championships are going on. So the the episode that you're about to listen to, we recorded it before the DCC happened, so we don't really have any sort of recap for that just yet. That's going to happen next episode. But on this episode of the Sand Podcast, we talk about some benchmarks in the CrossFit world that aren't just the girls. Benchmarks from like Ben Bergeron, CJ Martin, as well as you know how you have to change your training going into a game season like this. And of course, cock to bar pull-ups i mean what else what else is there to talk about anyway i hope you guys enjoy it and i'll see you guys next time welcome to this episode of sharks against narcs uh, okay. okay i'm okay. about that uh, name i really like that one too uh that one is from the rumble on youtube and uh it really spoke to me it spoke to me because it's a it's a new version of an old saying which is when you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. Yes, that's the exact one. That's the exact one that I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, no, I, I really I like that one. I, I like think of it thinking of it in terms of like snitches get stitches. Snitches get stitches. There's there's <laughs> just like a whole group of sharks, like the uh, the pigs from New um, Guinea. Uh, what's the what's that British gangster movie? With oh, uh, La- or not not Law Talking to Smoke Barrels. It's snatch, Snatch, Snatch. Snatch is one. for Acha Ari has uh, has his. Um, has his pigs yeah, he has his the pigs. dead body. That's right. <laughs> and so I, I just imagine there's a gangster somewhere who has his like his sharks with freaking laser beams on his head. Uh-huh. Uh, the people listening to this are going to hear a lot of noise. I don't think they can hear it, actually. Yeah, no. They're going to hear a lot of us pausing because currently Car- uh, uh, Armin's <laughs> millwork is being attacked by a teddy bear. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a wild Muppet gremlin in my house right now, and he is just fucking lit. He is... At a hundred right now, and so uh, Armin decided to, <laughs> to acquire a third dog. Uh, we introduced him in the last episode. Yeah, I know we did, we did. But and it is a big ass. It's like a regular puppy, but if the puppy were the size of a full size dog, <laughs> it's a Godzilla puppy. It's a Godzilla puppy. <laughs> he's he's uh, he's about eleven weeks old, and he is twenty two pounds. He has no bones. <laughs> yes, he has no bones, but literally he is made full out of rubber. Gumption. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you guys, we are uh, we are right now. In a very interesting time yes. to live in this CrossFit world. Mm-hmm. The 2019 only season. In the, only in the, cross, in the respect of CrossFit, Correct. though. And in, in, other, in all other areas of life, the world is very boring and static. At the it's very Christmassy. Yes. Well, the, the AI that is controlling all the inputs. Oh, dear God, uh, not this, not this <laughs> again. <laughs> those, that, those creatures are telling us that everything is boring, except for the CrossFit game season, which, by the way, is kicking off. Within like I don't know ten hours of us recording this right oh. now, correct? Oh. So the uh, the Dubai CrossFit Championships are starting very very soon, mm-hmm. and uh, they are going to be the start of the 2019 season officially. By the time that this episode airs, there's going to be qualifiers uh, for the 2019 CrossFit Games. What a player! <laughs> who are both individuals and team. Hi, hey, honey. What's up? What up? You came at a perfect time. No, it's good because Bowie is is Lit. fucking on the next level right now. So yes. yeah, he's he's just so ready to to climb up onto those counters. And Look, he just tried to do a backflip. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> My God, Bowie, where'd you get that unicycle from? Uh, yeah. So by the time this airs, there's going to be both individual and team qualifiers for the CrossFit Games. Yeah. And uh. We still have no fucking idea what's actually happening with the CrossFit Yeah, I don't know. What it, I don't even know if it's there incredible. is a CrossFit Games. I don't know if uh, there's affiliates anymore. There's no rule book, so nothing matters. Nothing really honestly. matters, right? We don't really know, so nothing really matters. But what I do have, I have all the events. Well, not all the events. I have almost all of the events mm. for uh, Dubai. So I want to. Oh I wanna, shit! You hacked the mainframe. I hacked the mainframe, guys. Mm. Uh, I want to get into these events. And I want to just take a look at them because there's some interesting things here, specifically with the teams. Mm. <laughs> and here's what's happening with the teams. When I say like um, team competition, mm-hmm. what do you think of? What are some of the things that come to mind with oh, the team competition? Synchronized. 
relay style. Relays, okay. Pushing Partner a giant work. sled covered in pull-up bars down the middle of a football field. That was awesome. Yeah. Two yeah. people field, working yeah. while two people are holding. Okay. Yeah. Lots worms. of buddy carries. Mm-hmm. Worms. worms. So, so things that require like team teamwork. coordination mm-hmm. or teamwork or anything like that. Uh, a bunch of people stacked on top of each other inside of a trench coat. Nice. Like Russian that. dolls. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. I like yes. that. I like that one a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not going to see any of that. No. Uh, as far as I know, and I have almost every event, I think a minus one event is what I'm missing here. Every single team event is the exact same as an individual event, except it's done as essentially a relay. Oh. Okay. So they're just going to be testing what's the, the, the what the team competition is just who's the fittest grouping of four fit people yeah, correct. who are just on the same team. So here's an example. Um there is an event called Baywatch. Uh-huh. Which is for the individuals an eight hundred meter assault air runner mm-hmm. and then a three hundred and fifty meter swim. Yeah. Jesus. For time. Another swim event. Yeah. And then that's event two, actually. Mm-hmm. And then the team version of that is 800 meter assault air runner, 350 meter swim uh, with pairs. So the women go first and then the men go. But it's like a relay. So the women relay into the other woman and then the men relay into the other man i don't know so how each, does each woman go individually is I this guess, yeah. legal in dubai men I going no into wi- men going into other men women going into other women i'm my, pretty sure <laughs> that is not allowed my personal in the favorite, kingdom of uh whatever. the united arab emirates right the united that's what it is arab emirates um here's here's my personal favorite style of team workout it's, it's a style of team workout we haven't seen before, mm-hmm. but is, is... I'm a big fan of this one. ...is really phenomenal. This is yeah. very grid. And again, I reached out to them. Uh, I haven't... Uh, I mean, right now, it's like it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. They're getting ready for this event right now. So I haven't gotten any details other than what the events are. So maybe things have changed over the weekend as they do it, and maybe they have a different reason or, or, or sort of like a, a logic behind why things are running the way they are other than logistics. But here's an example of a workout. Under pressure, it's a 10-minute time cap. It's like a yoke carry into uh, parallel handstand push-ups, into like box jump overs, into ring muscle-ups, and then re-yoke carry again. Mm -hmm. The team version of under pressure is choose one male athlete, Mm -hmm. do under pressure. That's the score. That's what? Dope. What? So that you basically so okay. pick your champion. It's yeah. like uh, you, uh-huh. you, you, you are like no one else. Yeah, you're you're essentially like voting an avatar for yourself. Well, that's that's just mm-hmm. nonsense. There, see, when when Chase hinted, oh, that's so grid. Me being familiar with grid, I was like, <laughs> you're listing out like four different things. So I'm like, okay, I think I like that. I like where this is going. Each person on the team <laughs> does one of the things, and you no. choose, is it a man going to do the parallel mm-hmm. handstand push-ups or a woman? How's mm-hmm. that going to play out? No, no, no. That's the uh, that's that's the least makes sensey version of all that. <laughs> the least makes it's sense. So great. It makes so sense. So in it theory, makes sense and yeah. sense and so not. depending on if he can get his registration, and Matt Frazier could potentially win both the individual and the team competition. Correct. Both. Yeah. He could just register as his own team. Matt Fraser is going to win the team competition as well. Because, for example, <laughs> there's there's another version of this where it's a it's a workout that's like rope climbs and handstand walks. And then the team version of it is choose a female athlete. Mm-hmm. Female uh, does the rope climbs. I was worried that they're going to be like all Dubai about it and only have you pick males. <laughs> they're going to be all Dubai <laughs> about it? Oh, fuck. Uh, like, you guys, they're, they're never going <laughs> to talk to me again after they hear that. I'm that's sorry. terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, uh, so yeah, so the the team workouts at Dubai, and again, that's the worst thing we've said about Dubai. We're that's not I've the worst said thing. Plenty of bad <laughs> stuff yeah. about so, Dubai. Like we're Here's we're the team competition. This. The women sit over there and don't <laughs> compete on the floor at all, and then the men do everything. Uh, we we can't we can't really know exactly how it all pans out because we're living at a time where it has not happened yet. Yes, and so we're gonna have to really recap it next. Well, week. What we can do is wildly speculate. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say. Well, obviously, Travis Williams elects himself mm-hmm. for he makes that decision for his team that he's going to do that event <laughs> yes. no matter yeah. what i hope he does and uh, he's also going to try to do the handstand walk one yes. plus uh surprise prediction matt does enter the team competition <laughs> they throw in final event a fireman's carry matt fireman's carries himself now you're asking how does he do that how does he do that does he get a dummy and throw it over his shoulders no because that wouldn't count because he wasn't being fireman's carried he gets a rigid mannequin hear me out he 
climbs on its shoulders as if the mannequin is fire carrying himself and then using just exceptional uh, muscle conditioning and core strength he hops the mannequin forward by worming his body never touches the ground only balancing the mannequin feet like kind of he's the T yeah. he's the T on the top of the mannequin and he hops forward the full uh, 7k distance of that fire you may be wondering like what musculature allows you to do that yeah. and for men I don't know if it's different for women mm-hmm. but for men it's what allows you to stop your pee midstream yes. just he's squeezing yeah. that and relaxing the, it the, and t- the taint muscles the taint muscles yeah. it's, yes. he has a very explosive taint <laughs> uh, as, as do most elite athletes uh, Little do you know. So wait, it, that's all where this, the secret is. Th- this episode will air once Dubai is completely Already over, wrapped yeah. up there. Okay, so, yeah, lo- so looking back at the congratulations, weekend, Matt Fraser. Yeah, congratulations, Matt Fraser, and uh, or all, conversely, all... congratulations, Roman Krennikov. Yeah, no, it's not gonna happen. I saw <laughs> the dude let's, getting let's... fitted for his equipment today on their story, and he does fitting. not know how to win. <laughs> <laughs> what was he not fitting like a winner? No, nah, he was fitting. <laughs> And uh, oh, let's all have a moment of silence for the sad uh, death by shark of, uh, of um, I'm going to say, uh, uh, Laura, Laura Horvath, her career <laughs> so promising. Cut She's so now an short. adaptive athlete. Uh, okay, so just Im- envision. But she is going to dominate that division. Just taps in After Hungarian. she lost her head in a shark attack. Guys, 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 she moment of silence. Moment of silence. Okay, and we're back. All right. Uh, I have no doubt that Laura Horvath would beat a shark in a swimming contest. Yeah. If it was a CrossFit sanctioned event, event, yeah. she'd beat it in a swim. Or Pow. get this. Wait. Instead, she loses her. Uh, she loses her head. But not unlike that chicken that survived after it got its head cut off because it was enough of the brain stem there for the motor functions to still operate. Basically, she becomes a just a headless fitness machine. It already has a natural uh, work capacity, but no longer any fear or anything else. There's just like a lot of no. neck and the back. <laughs> no, no. So they just set her up and push her into workouts, and she just crushes them and becomes she, the fittest headless she person. She takes the world. takes just the top portion of her sports bra and like peels <laughs> down, and there's a set of eyes and a nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's like holy shit she's all torso torso uh. and legs <laughs> i just uh. i'm just envisioning like uh her standing on top of the podium headless blood shooting out of her torso <laughs> and like some dude walking up to like put a medal around her traps and <laughs> like sure her body like leans forward squirts blood on his face and he's like C- congratulations <laughs> it's like after after the accident we had to make some some so they had to make some modifications so they say wait well how does she how does she see where she's going and where, where she takes the line and then she just opens her hands like the thin man in pan's labyrinth oh, and she's got little eyeballs <laughs> in the middle of her hands it's even more frightening <laughs> and then she attacks workouts yeah. yeah yeah that was awesome that was my favorite part of the whole weekend yeah that would make it interesting i'd watch yeah, I'd pay for that. Um, I think uh, I think it's going to be interesting. I I'm going to be mm-hmm. trying to stay up as much as I can to watch it. The time difference Wait, is a little fucked for Where do they us. watch? Where do you watch? It's on yeah. YouTube. Okay, sweet. Which I'm assuming again by by the time this comes out, it's already happened. But all yeah. the all the replays will be on YouTube awesome. and on their site and stuff. Nice. So, um, that is uh, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. And, and Chase mentioned Travis Williams, and we've been talking a lot about Travis Williams mm-hmm. recently. Uh, he's come up in a lot of different conversations because mostly just with you guys talking shit about him and just insulting him and That's naming him. I, yeah. I'm the only one that really talks shit just about. Him. Yeah, mad I, shit. I, I I like the fact that he's uh, he's he's a trash talk. Yeah, yeah. Like trash talk supreme is what this world needs, especially in CrossFit because everyone kind of puts on this like you know goody two shoes <laughs> face, right? And mm-hmm. uh, he brought up something. I I just recently interviewed Travis, and I think it was off the air that he was talking about how as an individual athlete he could never talk shit. Because he would talk shit, and then Matt Fraser would come and be like, "I'm gonna beat you," and he'd be like, "Oh fuck, you're actually gonna beat me." So I guess I can't really <laughs> yeah, say anything. Yeah, he, he did. He did talk about it in the actual interview. Yeah, because he was just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna like, get, get my ass ass kicked." Yeah, <laughs> that's not. Fun. But on the team, because the because there's like you know four variables in each individual, mm-hmm. and uh, the team workouts themselves tend to be a little bit different. It that like anything can happen, mm-hmm. and so um, he has sort of made a name for himself. I think now recently because over the past year he's basically been like i'm gonna win the crossfit games on a team Mm -hmm. and so last year he took sixth with don't stop Mm -hmm. and they had a couple blow-ups but according to him sheila barden was injured the entire time like her back Uh was fucked so that's why they they didn't do so hot um similar to how in 2015 like basically norcal was going to win the games except 
Miranda tore her ACL. Yes. Like they probably still could have won without her. Like a like only a five person team yeah, still yeah. probably could have could have won the games. But um, so he has three competitions that he's gonna be in: Dubai, Wadapalooza, and, and one of the Brazil ones, with three different team formats. And his plan is to win every single one of them, specifically so that at Wadapalooza, when he wins his mm-hmm. second uh, his second qualifying spot, uh-huh. mm-hmm. he can hand the qualifying spot to Rich, <laughs> who takes second place to him. Uh, he be like, here, I'm not going to be using this. You can a, have it. That's a pretty good troll <laughs> move there. That's a good oh, yeah. troll move. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, that's great. But I hope he wins just so we can see the look on Rich's face if that were to happen. <laughs> My legend. <laughs> I mean, we already we already got like uh, a slight look at at what Rich's fl- face will look like during that interview that you had with Rich Ferning. Whenever you brought up Travis, <laughs> when I brought up Travis Williams, and he was like, "Who's that?" No. Um, <laughs> Let's see his the look on his face and spray him with champagne. It yeah. will look not mm-hmm. change one the, bit. No, it won't. It, It'll no, be the same face from the, the face I'm talking about in particular is right when you said Travis said that. They would be mayhem. Would be hard pressed to take third at Wadapalooza, and Rich just like, <laughs> like you can see the anger and the mental snapshot in his head. He's like, mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, noted. <laughs> he's cool. We got a mural up of Travis Williams and me beheading him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He just has the same picture of Travis Williams from the games, like taped to his mirror that he just crumples every morning and then puts it back up at night. No, no, that's every not. That's back. no. Anyone could do that. That's 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 amateur hour. Instead. He goes to his wall that are just covered with black composition books uh, where he scribbles thousands of words a day in tiny little pen letters like uh, like Kevin Spacey in Seven. And he just pulls one down and it says Travis Williams on it and he just scribbles in it for hours and hours and hours because he puts the work in. What's one thing we know about Rich Froning? He puts the work in. What's yeah. in the box? He's, ca- he's casting a magical spell. <laughs> Man. If he messes up even one of those little glyphs, it, Travis will just going to fall in love with him instead right. of not winning the CrossFit Games. <laughs> I don't know if that's how that works. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, I guess what's what's really cool about Rich this... Rich Ronin cuts his fingerprints off every day, so yeah. he doesn't leave a single one. And they still haven't found the the, the person that he is feeding to death yes. for gluttony. It's it's going to be really, really terrifying. <laughs> yes, they did. Has it's Cliff Bogart. Seen? Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, I was death say, on has, spaghetti. Has anybody seen Dan Bailey recently? Yes. Or um, <laughs> just pulling a sled in the woods. The uh, the speaking of Dan Bailey, yeah. Just to, as a total side, have you guys seen him recently? Uh, He's yeah. a big, thick boy. He is he has shrunk. Oh, yeah. oh his his shoulders and arms have like shrunk, shrunk. That's huh. what happens when you completely separate your quadricep from your whatever. It's like yeah, his knee yeah. exploded. And Working out is way less smaller. fun, as yeah. it turns mm-hmm. out. I feel like I feel like he's he's definitely in that sort of recovery phase from injury, where his entire body is like, "Stop this, man! I've been <laughs> trying to tell you, stop, Why Dan, <laughs> stop it." And it's <laughs> odd because you could have figured, you know, with that injury and all that, he uh, I'd expect him to get bigger because you know, with that kind of injury, you could get prescribed steroids for healing. So yeah. I'm surprised you didn't take them up on that. I mean, you're not That's competing true. in that. You might as well get a uh, nice uh, two-year cycle in. Dan Bailey do steroids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think Dan Bailey has a has a, a competitive future ahead of him? No. Mm, uh, I, I it's don't done, think, right? I don't think he well, wants to Well, I mean, maybe back. Masters or something. Yeah, it depends what you mean by competitive. Yeah. I mean, like, could he maybe qualify for the games again? Yeah, I think he could probably could qualify. Could he win, like, a local checkers tournament? Wait, he's going to qualify for the games in the new format? He's going to he's no. top 20 in the world, uh, no, I'm saying, win is it, the U.S., is it, or win an event? Is it outside the realm of possibility that Dan Bailey could, at some point in the future, qualify for the games again? I'm going to say yes, because you'd never fucking know with this crazy format he could win some sort of thing somewhere and get a spot That's I believe true. Dan Bailey Invitational yeah <laughs> <laughs> he, what, what if he changed his name to Beth Think about this. Dude, that'll mm-hmm. do it. And he got in yeah. through our sanction event. That's right. That's right. That's That'd good be point. awkward. Games. That's good point. The fittest um, Beth. Well, I mean, he just identifies as a Beth. That's yes. totally fine. Exactly, which Greg Lastman is now in favor of as being part totally of the cool. rules. Uh-huh. What's wrong that's with that? the thing. Is like if you, you it, like Dan, Dan Bailey injured and perhaps on the waning end of a competitive CrossFit career is still far more competitive in terms of an ability to actually qualify for the games than 80% of the people who are hashtag CrossFit athletes Pretty out true. there in the world. That, so. is, that is a good point. That is a good point. And he, he was also the pioneer of using his giant delts and mm-hmm. and biceps to do everything. So yeah. 
you know, fuck it. Who turbo needs a pull knee? ups. Yeah. Who needs a knee? Turbo <laughs> pull ups. I am pushing myself down for faster pull ups. <laughs> I'm just saying so that it moves faster. This isn't an efficient way of doing pull ups, but if he needs to do pull ups yes. this way, he has this in his back pocket. He has it in his back pocket. <laughs> it's so yeah. earnest was the best part about that video. That is the best part of well, that video. Well, it's also important to remember that that was a time, and this continued into the early days of the Open, when a, a, a large portion of what CrossFit was was just figuring out how to do it faster. Like, doing Fran faster meant more fitness. Mm-hmm. And remember, butterfly pull-ups had only been invented like six months earlier. <laughs> so <laughs> they were breaking all sorts of new ground and pull-up techniques. So who knows? Pull-up Could have been the way of the future. Uh-huh. You know what I haven't seen in a long time that never caught on, it sh- which should become more of a CrossFit meme? Remember Pat Barber's uh, cock-to-bar push, uh, pull-ups? Do you remember this? <laughs> oh, yeah. You remember mm-hmm. cock-to-bar? No. I have no uh, idea what this is. This was in, uh, I want to say it may have been in cock-to-bar, the Montana. Like was it when the, Halloween happens. <laughs> but was it was in the Montana. Was it in the Montana with the, the nice. throwdown thing? Big Sky? It was in the Big Sky throwdown? Probably. I think it was. But he, uh, where they basically get a big kip going, and uh, and then instead of doing toes to bar or chest to bar, they kind of split the difference, and you touch your cock to the it's bar. Basically, it's basically uh, bar muscle up kip practice. Yeah, yeah. But Just for reps. right up there. Yeah. And That's a good idea. Let's. Why haven't we seen that at the games? I've been trying to do dick to rings. Mm-hmm. But what would be the movement better. standard for females? Scissoring. Scissoring it's the clit bar. to bar. <laughs> clit to bar. <laughs> I, I, mine was way grosser. Uh, Wait, what? What would yours be? I'm all good. Go ahead, uh-huh. Chase. I, I, I curtains. Curtains. <laughs> curtains. 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 Oh but yeah. You, well, yeah. there goes there goes the four women that listen to the show. <laughs> Sorry. Actually, I know how it could be scored because you know clit to bar. Just you can't really. You don't know exactly where it is, but a special. <laughs> you don't know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> from the outside, from the outside, it's a harder event to judge. Oh, from the I outside, mean, you don't. Close where from is the outside, it? You don't. <laughs> Just ask you know, you know, friend, va- though, you know like. vaguely, you know vaguely. But here's what I propose: I propose uh, a special CrossFit competition maxi pad that oh. uh, that. And the maxi rings pad itself yeah. it rings a bell. No one and has that a has to make contact. Has a sensor. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. So it's an objective standard for mm-hmm. if it has touched the bar. I don't. I don't think yeah. we should talk about the maxi pad any any further because no. that is some trademark things that I've been working on. I, I think specific, <laughs> specifically for double unders and heavy cleans. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, there instead. Better yet, a current is run through the bar. This current also <laughs> runs into a wire that is attached. There's plenty of slack, okay? So it's not going to inhibit movement, but it runs under the clo- from the ground under the clothing of, of the lady athlete and into her maxi pad so that when the maxi pad makes contact with the bar, they have, you know the guy from Operation with the red nose that's <laughs> over there? It connects. It goes, <laughs> eh, eh, every time. And you know, therefore, she's making full click contact with the bar because the big man's clown nose lights up red every time. And then you have one separate Operation Clown Nose Man for every lane of competition. Like how that and part of it all doesn't going change. Off. Just it's, eh, 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 it's still the Operation Clown Nose Man. Yes. But we don't we don't have a different we don't have a different representation of what a good rep looks like. We just have to use the Operation. Yes. Broke, don't fix it. Yeah, but that's the thing. And plus, how do you actually finish it off? How do you actually finish off your round? You how get, do you finish? You get off the little whip. You get the little wishbone part, and you have to go and put it inside the Operation Man. Then you got to go get the little. Uh, other part that's I can only remember the wishbone. What were the other parts I never to get out operation. of operation? I never. I there, never. there's a Charlie horse. There's was a Charlie there? horse? Yeah. A horse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there you I go. I don't remember that part. Um, a horse, y- of course. A horse. Yeah. Of course. It's yes and Armin. You should be uh, yes and. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't remember that. There's got to be other parts. Yes and I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, this will definitely be a feature at the Fitbeth Games. Yeah. This will definitely be a thing. <laughs> now I'm just now I'm stuck on trying to think of another thing. <laughs> raspberries. It's it's also there's raspberries. Uh, See, it so didn't work. Uh, no. Back to DFX. <clears throat> DFX. Dubai. Yes. Oh. Fitness explosion. <laughs> Dude, that's what they used to call it. Uh, uh, yeah. So um, I I wonder about how they're going to deal with the fact that a team of individual athletes, Cassie Lance McWhorter, Lucas Esslinger, uh, Raz, not Rasmus. Hogberg. No, not Ho- Hogberg. It's Adrian, uh, Adrian Mumwai. Mumwai. That's, yeah. right, that's right. And, and uh, Jen, Jen Smith, four individual athletes who are going to win this team competition. For fuck sure. 
definitely going to fucking win this mm-hmm. team competition. And then they're all going to individually qualify for the CrossFit Games themselves. Mm-hmm. How this is going to happen. Like, the Open's going to happen. All of them are going to have invites. And then they're just going to say, all right, so the second place team from Dubai now gets an invite. So mm-hmm. Invictus X. So probably Invictus X. Yeah. I don't Definitely know, not Travis and his team. I don't know. <laughs> with, with it being relay style, it's going to be a tough call to see if Invictus X can put it together. Cause yeah, because it's teamwork that made their dream work. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they they aren't necessarily the four uh, best individual athletes. They're just gonna shove Maddie Myers at it. I don't is know. She, who's I don't think she's not on that one. This is Invictus Sask on? is the exact same team that took third at the games this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's or we, second it's at the Wesley games. Wesley Re- 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 Yeah, it's it's uh, Wesley Jen, Rethworld. Sam, Jen and then Dancer. I forget the girl's name. It starts with a K. Caitlin Cassis. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's going to be interesting to see exactly how this whole team thing pans out. I that part of it is is probably the most um you know vague sort of like beyond the mists of time type thing. Mm-hmm. You can kind of look forward and see like all right, well on the men's side it's basically the Matt Fraser show even though it is his general off season, he's he's probably in good enough shape that it's going to be fine. Which by the way, he put up this video recently. Jesus Christ. Where I don't know if you guys have you guys ever done the workout Macho Man? Remind me. No, Macho Man is familiar. an old school Ben Bergeron workout, mm. and it was uh, you men get a 185 pound barbell, women get a 135 ish pound barbell, and it is every minute on the minute for as long as possible. Three power cleans, three front squats, three shoulder to overhead. Mm. And the the rule of thumb was if you make it to 20, you can stop, mm-hmm. and then you the next time you do it, you add weight. And oh. you keep trying to make it to 20. But if you make it to 20, if you're you like it, a badass. If you oh, make yeah. it to 20 minutes, oh, you're yeah. essentially I, a monster. I couldn't like, make it. I'm not sure I could make it all the way to five just because of the my, the, the metabolic demand would be too much and I would die. Yeah. I'd have a heart attack. So, so uh, Matt Fraser mm-hmm. uh, did it with 205. Of course he did. And got to 30. Makes and sense. decided to call it a day at 30 <laughs> rounds. Because he was too bored. Uh, that's 90 power cleans, 90 front squats, and 90 jerks at 205. It sounds a lot easier when you put it that way. Yeah. It's not easy. Or, or It didn't sound easy when, did it when sound you put easy? it that way. Yeah. I feel like when you when you like clump it together, you think of it like, oh, it's just like a, it's like a long workout. I'm just going to do like a long workout. 90 shoulder to overhead at 205. <laughs> well, here's... <laughs> definitely doable that's within a, a day. Mm, yeah, that's but, a good point. But here's the other thing. Like if you just remove, even if you remove the power clean component, you just say like, just do three thrusters at 185 on the minute every minute uh, for... for as long as you can go. I'm like, already, I'm like, I'm probably tapping out after yeah, a you're few. Like, you're like, I got like, this many. I got this many. <laughs> and then, so it's like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to spice things up and we're going to um, make, we're going to partition the uh, the thrusters in half in a way that makes them harder. And we're going to add some power cleans at the top. So I got less than this many in me. That's before right. I'm too tired. Bergeron so. has a couple of really interesting uh, these benchmarks. Benchmarks that I think will stand the test of time of like cool shit that p- should be repeated regularly. Yep. Macho Man is one of them. I think I'm going to try it. You should. Yeah. You, I mean, listen, if you get to five, I think you're doing pretty good yeah, at yeah. 185. Um, that, that, think, that will be my mm, aspirational goal, get yeah. to five. So there's another one he called the beep test, Ugh. which I think beep test is like a is like a common thing in like conditioning tests for like uh, athletes, right? Yes. Right, Chase, yes. The, the only athlete here. Uh, Chase, Chase, has, Chase has played real sports, unlike the rest of us and, who got into exercising. Yeah. yeah. Could you tell me? Yeah. Ch- uh, Katie, do you know what the beep test is? Nope. There you go. Yeah. So it's an obnoxious thing where you start out uh, sprinting a certain distance um, and you have X amount of time to get down to the, the cone. Right. So it starts with a beep and then you have to sprint to the other cone mm-hmm. and then there's another beep. And you sprint back. And you run back. So it's basically mm-hmm. like the, the way that the test usually works, correct me if I'm wrong, is the beeps, the dis- the time between mm-hmm. the beeps gets shorter and shorter. Uh. Yes. So you eventually end up just running uh, wind sprints. Yeah. Uh. You're not like nonstop Suicide wind sprints. sprints. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and your yeah, score is how many beeps you make it. Mm-hmm. Right? The version of the beep test that uh, Ben Bergeron put together mm-hmm. is every minute on the minute as long as possible. Of Hot garbage. Seven chest to bar pull ups, seven thrusters at seventy five pounds, and seven burpees. And it is hmm. another one of those where I, I feel like I I I was it was like twenty fourteen and I thought I was in really good shape. <laughs> and I, I tried out the Bergeron beep yeah. test and I got 
not even to 10 rounds. I didn't even make, I made it like six or maybe seven minutes and mm-hmm. I, I felt like I was going to die. I was like, what the fuck happened to me? Yeah. I'm just trying to think of making, making one round is enough of a challenge there. That's a lot of, a lot of different yeah. movements you got to get into yeah. in that one minute time frame. Mm-hmm. There's I think a lot the, of transitioning. I think the biggest score, what do you think the biggest score is out there? Remind me, I'm still, I'm a little fuzzy on what the structure of this is. What is it again? It's every minute. As long as you can. Okay, so, so it's just have, an imam. Uh, it's with, just an with, imam. With those things. Yeah. What, what's the rep scheme again? It's seven chest bar pull ups, uh-huh. seven uh, thrusters with seventy five pounds, seven burpees each huh. minute. That sounds like about a minute's worth of work. It yeah, is about yeah, exactly. a minute's worth of work. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> it is, in fact, about forty, thirty five <laughs> to forty seconds of work. <laughs> and then when it starts and then, out, and then twenty <laughs> seconds of screaming. <laughs> Yeah, it well, Scre- <laughs> screams internally. <laughs> so, oh, why I, did I do this? <laughs> a good like, what's the best score? Isn't it like thirty three? Yeah, the the. I mean, I, I've seen score close to forty uh, online. Good. There was like a thirty eight minute video of some dude getting in like the mid thirties, and I was like, why? what? What are you? That's so a good exercise just, in stupidity. Yeah. I was like, so what are, are you? you like one hundred and twenty five pounds? Like, what? <laughs> are you just, do you so you're just doing that? You're just basically doing <laughs> those three brutal movements just continuously for Correct. what thirty minutes? Yeah gross that's another one of the things where I, I feel like you you don't really need to go as long as you can you get mm-hmm. to like 20 and he he had this uh I he had this benchmark 20. he had this is this set of of uh, scores like basically you know where he had mm-hmm. taken all the people who had submitted scores and looked at how they did in the open and how they did in the regionals and the games and stuff and he was like okay if you can get um if you can get you know uh eight to twelve mm-hmm. you're like a high-end open guy 12 mm-hmm. to 15 or 12 to 16 you're like a low-end regionals person mm-hmm. 16 to 20 you're like you know maybe qualifying for the games like 25 plus you're like a top end games athlete mm-hmm. was like the conditioning necessary right but that also comes with like a 300 pound snatch and like yeah. 350, yeah. 360 pound clean jerk there's other stuff you need in your toolbox yeah yeah i think but, i think the furthest i ever got was 11 yeah, and that's I was like, big. I'm never doing that again. Nope. Yeah, no, you don't ever have to do it again. I, there's a few other ones. Uh, there's one that's like uh, Mr. Miracle, Mir- Mr. Miracle. It's like ten to one power cleans at two twenty five and like deep parallel handstand push ups. <laughs> oh, that's why. Yeah, that, I, that, I think it's uh, Mr. It's Mr. Miracle it's or something, something, yeah, like, that. something like that. It's a douchey name. Yeah. There, that might be a little more predictive of games performance there. Just because you got you got your you got your actual heavy weight in there along with a very difficult gymnastics move. Yeah. I'm gonna call that it's I'm the combination. Call, yeah, I'm gonna call the previous one a good test of how well do you think you can do in the open. That's a good indicator. Possibly. Mm-hmm. I well I think I think of all of these, Macho Man is probably the best one mm. because it's conditioning and muscle endurance and weightlifting. Yeah. Right. I think it's all those things together. But there's there's one, uh, there's like a, he, he has the big barbell complex. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. big barbell complex is really BBC. interesting. It's, uh, that's right. <laughs> it's the BBC. Get it in you, you know? Um, mm-hmm. it yeah, is, but it. not in uh, Dubai. But not in Dubai. That's right. It is, uh, it is a three position clean where the bar never touches the ground except for the, the position where it touches the ground. So it's like high hang, knee, mm-hmm. ground, uh-huh. and then uh, push press, mm-hmm. three position clean, push jerk. Three position clean split jerk, and you you're it's a complex. It's you're a complex, so okay. you can't let go of the bar. Bar can't rest on the floor. Okay. And uh, that one, I think I watched a video of Kendrick Ferris almost to get two forty five, mm. and he like tore on the last clean, like he like tore a callus yeah. and just couldn't couldn't hold on anymore. Yeah. And I think isn't uh, there a video of like Jeff Evans doing like two seventy five? Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. the big we we did a whole thing about the big. Big yeah. clean complex. Uh, Jeff Evans. I think someone got into the three hundreds. Someone got like three hundred five. Were you guys Jeff trying Evans. to pit Jeff Evans against Sam Dancer at the time? Possibly, possibly. Oh, yeah, big guys. And then yeah. there was uh, the fridge. Nick. Nick. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking. Nick Block. Nick Block, the Block himself. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he also did did really well on that thing. But the the first version of this type of thing that I ran into actually wasn't from uh, Bergeron at all. It was from CJ. Mm. CJ Martin had a version of this that he's been using since like 2007 or some mm-hmm. shit. And it is a 20 minute AMRAP of 20 pull ups. Mm-hmm. Cliff's going to like this one 20 pull ups, 20 burpees, 20 thrusters at 135. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, what's the 20 pull ups, yeah. 20 burpees, uh-huh. 20 thrusters at 135. But what's the structure of the AMRAP 20. Oh, AMRAP, oh, AMRAP. 20. Okay. AMRAP. Yeah. So one, mm. one round. Yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> so he had this whole metric where he was like, if you get into your third round, you're like really good. 
Uh-huh. You know, open guy. If you get three rounds plus, you're basically making the games. And then if you're Josh Bridges, you get like five and a half rounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, like yeah. that, that is insanity. Yeah, but yeah. it is kind of his wheelhouse there. Yeah. yeah. That's that good shit for him. Yes. Just very good giant shit for him. quads. <sighs> yeah. And uh, very short range of motion. Very short very range, short of, range motion. of motion. The Speaking of quads. Oh. <clears throat> go on. I, I just want to try to get an update on mm. on your quadricep blow up. Oh, my quadricep blow up is it going to happen? I don't know. I'm supposed to. I was supposed to squat yesterday. Well, I thought uh, about calling you out with yes. my my squat video that I just posted. Oh yeah, no, I did see your squat video. I immediately my my but my my immediate thought was I could probably do that like next week sometime. Yeah. So Chase squatted 400 for four. 400, 400 for four. But you've done 405 mm. for five, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Before? Okay, you have. Okay, this so was just good. percentage this is work. Just percentage work. Cool. Because I think I I'm I will yeah. I should be able to check just percentage work. I should be able to check. I think the 400 for reps box relatively. soon. Soon, um, but then we'll see what happens. Then you have to immediately go from that to the hospital. No, no, no. <laughs> Into because my quadricep will have separated. Into uh, 345 front squat for three. Oh yes, that's good. I should actually try that out. You know, I haven't front squatted in a while, uh, and it's usually a lot like Brent Fikowski. I don't feel the need to front squat all the time. I just assume it's there. I front squatted like th- I've, I did a 300 pound front squat at some point after the injury just to see if it was there or not and just did 300 by one a while back but that was like the last time and that was well over a year ago if not over two years ago well so yeah I should start integrating that back in but that being said uh i'm on I, i'm using i'm using chase's squat videos as inspiration and i'll just be tracking your percentage work as max work for me <laughs> yeah uh, you gotta one up me each time yes there you go oh that's true i should do i'm gonna do 402 by four hashtag that's how ruptured it. quadricep exactly. brought to you by chase Coming that's right soon. the thing is that's the thing is i'm just it's all ha- like I'm, I'm taking my quads out of the equation it's all posterior chain no qua- I, i'm not even gonna flex my quads while i do it it's just gonna lift the whole thing with it's my gonna, ass it's gonna be a good morning he's yes. a good morning exactly. you're essentially doing your squats course. how i do my exactly. squats that's <laughs> yes just just super low bar straighten out the legs first and then just stand up with the bar on my back i can do this it's the only way any max effort attempt has ever gone yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that is true that is true Word. that's how it should be i think i think right. they should just make uh they should make the 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 pain yeah. powerlifting version of like What's like the most dangerous powerlifting total? Yeah. I mean, good morning is one of them. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like a one hundred max Jersey. good morning plus a one hundred max bent press. Here's the most here's the plus most da- a one hundred max. The most dangerous one is 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 here, catch this. <laughs> <laughs> a one hundred max here, catch this. <laughs> Bowie, don't eat that shoe. Bowie, don't eat that shoe. He's gonna go for <laughs> There we shoe. go. No, he got he's out. He's out. He's not eating the shoe. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Thank you, babe. Uh, uh, he was on the ball with that. Do uh, you ever see guys at the gym hybridize two different position, two different types of things into one really bad technique? Like you see the guys CrossFit. No, yeah, no, no, not cross, <laughs> not CrossFit. <laughs> but it's right. But you ever see t- a guy hybrid like he, uh, like he, he has his legs like kind of semi sumo for a deadlift, but he has his arms on the outside of his super wide oh, yeah. legs. I'm talking about people who Classic. really have no fucking idea what they're yeah. doing. Oh yeah. But, or you see the guys who have like their bar is up in like high bar position up on their neck, but then they kind of are bending forward like it's a low bar back squat and just sort of resting the bar on the back of their neck. They're just, it's like they've seen a bunch of different types of squats or different types of deadlifts and they're going to just mix it all up into one well, type of thing. Yeah, of course, Kyle. I mean, what high bar do? high bar back squat, really good for the quads. <laughs> low bar back squat, really good for the hamstrings and the ass. Put it together. To kill two uh, birds with one stone. You can't, you can't do a yes. high bar position or you can't do a low bar position and a high bar squat. Yeah. So obviously the solution is a high bar position and a low bar squat. That yeah, right there right. is just well, how, efficiency. How, how else are you going to get those spinal erectors off there? Correct. Mm-hmm. You got to get that those spinal erectors to pop. Oh, man. I, uh, I, you ever unconsciously make faces when you see people lift and it's just really ugly? Yes. <laughs> I did. Yeah, all the time con- in my own videos. Conscious usually for me. But no, yes, I don't. On. It's like where I just realized I was grimacing at a guy at the gym because he was doing... And I, I got God, grimacing at a guy at the gym. <laughs> just God bless him because it's not like he was... Do, it's not like the weird... Like, he seemed like a normal, normal person, but it was the kind of thing where he was front squatting and just... He was like in a really good position at the top, and then his entire body imploded by the bottom of the squat. And I don't even mean he was maxing out. I mean he was like warming up with the bar, and like his knees came together, his elbows went from high to basically pointed straight at the ground, and this is my favorite part: the bar went from 
horizontal leveled with the earth to like at kind of a 45 degree angle favoring <laughs> one side and I thought well that was clearly that guy needs to warm up a little bit more and then I watched him continue to front squat and increasing weights and repeat that exact same Dude. constellation of movements every well, single time so he's so, consistent yes very con- well consistency is important in the gym well I've heard that I gotta ride out all right oh. Go fitness go enjoy calling. some fitness, Chase. While Chase, after fitness. you leave, I'm going to tell them about how your weekend the competition That's went. That's bullshit. It that didn't yeah. actually happen. It got rained out, guys. It was a crazy turn of events. Also, the <laughs> folks from your your father's gym said hello, oh, and nice. then they kicked my ass at CrossFit. Oh, oh nice. very nice. Shout out, shout, shout out, out to CrossFit. Omega. Omega, oh, you guys yeah. are superior at fitness oh, than everybody awesome. on this show. All right, awesome, see, you, awesome, see awesome. you later, Chase. My, you know, I will. Well, I, I want to interrogate Chase more about this next time. But my father was just telling me that he he about the, the couple really fit people there. He says there's a very tiny woman there who I actually met in person. Who unfortunately her name is escaping me, but she was very tiny. And my father tells me she's extremely fit. Was there a tiny woman on their team? Can't confirm there was a tiny woman. Yeah, sorry, there was a tiny woman. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. You heard it from. You heard it from, from the horse's mouth. There was yeah. a tiny woman. So, uh, so now that Chase is is still in the room, but not on the microphone, we can definitely talk he about had, this competition. He had to leave early. The, he had to leave the podcast early to run directly into the bathroom. They uh, they had to change one of the workouts because it had like an outdoor component, um, and it was like raining. Well, it was actually raining. Yeah, it was raining I thought really he was bad. Just making shit up, but yeah, um, that makes sense. It they was had a lot to change one of the workouts, but yeah. the rest of the workouts went down and. Uh, as if, if you hear Chase say it, which, by the way, hurts my feelings and, and I imagine probably hurts a lot of other people's feelings, too. Mm-hmm. Chase would say that he's just not in shape, <laughs> which is like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Right. Like, if listen, he's I get not it. in shape, then what who the fuck is? are we? Right. He's like he's in like he's in. I have an answer to that question. In bad shape, in very, very, very yeah. bad shape. That's we're what just, we're in. We're just piles of slime yes. with eyeballs. And yes. One of us has glasses. Yes, most definitely. Uh, Slimy glasses. We're hairy <laughs> piles of slime <laughs> with teeth and glasses. Yes, it's well, like a I, horror movie I'll here. pull up a sand classic. I'm just basically a, a stack of marshmallows with hair coming out of it. Sand classic. Sand classic. Fucking love it. Um, yeah, so, so it just didn't go well. I think they got like... How did you do, Chase? He got bad. Chase uh, says bad. I, I think they got like seventh or something overall. Mm, yeah. Um, but I think the way that he described it to me before the show started was uh, it, everything was basically a, a, a punch to the gut slash kick to the teeth mm. like from the get go. Just absolutely expecting to do uh, one level of goodness and getting undercut event after event after event. And by that, do you mean their performances were, were, were less yeah. than they were expecting or just the workouts? Were the, really their performances. Okay. They just weren't. I think, yeah, yeah. I think here's what's happened. I think they have been on like a, uh, they've been on like a strength kick for the past like three months. Yeah, yeah. So like not as much conditioning. And while Chase is still probably the fittest person at the gym mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, in sort of like comparison to the other people there, he's, he's like improving and hanging all, all of them are muted in their fitness in mm-hmm. general because they're doing all this strength yeah, work. Yeah. So while he's still the best person at the gym, they've all sort of dropped down a little bit yeah, and yeah. aren't in like tip top CrossFit shape. Yeah. Word. I'm thinking this whole ultra block periodization training for the game season is going to by necessity fall out of favor by the time next year comes yeah, yeah, yeah. because of this extended infinite CrossFit season. Well, I think infinite it'll, it'll st- I think it'll still happen, but I think that it's not going every, everybody can't be synchronized. You can't, you know, it won't be an entire community that's peaking at the same time. It'll be people deciding to peak in January yeah. or yeah. something like that. I mean, I think there might be a little bit more of a look at uh, Louis Simmons programming there, conjugate method. I'm, <laughs> I'm not joking, not joking. His whole uh, rationale for his whole thing was uh, to be instead of block periodizing various aspects to tra- try to be training every aspect of fitness needed for a power lifter uh, at the same time so you're ready to max out any given week mm-hmm. and what what is it's vert Verzhashansky 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 who wrote uh, super training uh, I'm not familiar with super Versha training. Shin. No. That's the book that he read no. originally that that helped him get all these concepts. But um, oh, he read a lot of a crazy lot of shit. books. Yeah, he read a lot yeah, of books. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you're right. I think there's going to be a a shift in the way that crossfitters are training for all this fitness stuff, um, especially because in a in a weird way it becomes like a choose your own adventure. Mm-hmm. You know, these guys who are qualifying this this weekend at Dubai, they like man like Matt. Fraser goes full fat mat mm-hmm. on the off season. Yeah, like yeah. A lot of people don't 
believe it or understand it, but he takes like months yeah. off. You know, like basically all of August and all of September and most of October, he's really not training. Mm. So we're um, gonna see Fat Matt at Dubai. We're not gonna see Fat Matt at Dubai yeah. because he is not gonna be. Uh, yeah, he didn't take that. Oh my God, Chase! Did you just drop my my fucking child? He sort of flopped. Unbelievable, Chase. This is why your team couldn't do well. You don't have the fitness to hold on to a 20-pound dog. He, fl- he jumped down on my hand and couldn't support his own weight. Unbelievable. My he fault. flopped like an Argentinian soccer player. It yes, Argentina, you're all He's cowards. trying to get the call. Your LeBron James act isn't working on me. <laughs> Chase, you puppy dropper. Uh, uh, he's going to go... Later, dude. Have a good he workout. He and his letterman's jacket are going to go back to varsity practice. They're at two a days right It's a now. letterman's jacket with no letters. I What's know. going on with that? It's just a men's jacket. Mm-hmm. Oh, we should make sand letterman's jackets. They'll be too expensive mm-hmm. for anyone to buy, but we should all own them. It's a letterman... <laughs> did we... Uh, did I in like in, for in high school, did I have a letterman's yeah. jacket? Katie, oh, fuck no. Katie, bring your letterman out. Do you have a letterman's jacket? Oh, she's got one that has oh so God. many pins and letters and things like... Oh my she's going to pull it out right now. Nice. Um, nice. So, so what that's we're, where that fitness comes from. The that's soccer. right. What we're seeing and the swimming and the gymnastics. Oh, Jesus. It's not fair. What we're seeing in uh, in in a lot of these athletes, like Matt Fraser, for example, and Rich Froning is the same deal. Is like they didn't get the off season that they usually get, mm-hmm. so they didn't have the same sort of like rebuilding phase going into the 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 uh, open and stuff that they usually did. Like when I was talking to Rich, Rich was saying that usually they don't really start training again until the new year, like January first ish. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that thing. Look at this. Those of you guys who are those of you guys who are just listening right now, uh, Katie, my wife Katie, just brought out her Letterman jacket from high school. Letterman jacket, very blinged out with some pins. And it's got it's got all these different pins on the back. It has a soccer ball and the word "schwing," which is her maiden name. And Kyle could nice. go wearing this out, and thinking it fits that yeah. Kyle. Yes, it is very cozy. What's amazing to me is that like jackets don't fit over my back, so this must be a tent on you. Did you did was that the style at the? Uh, the you style was to have like a hoodie that I grew up in Washington. Oh, gotcha. See, that makes sense. My favorite part of this thing uh, isn't the sports; it's the fact that she lettered in band, jazz, and pep. Yeah, pep. You, yeah, yeah. That's a you 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 crushed it, babe. Yep, you crushed you crushed the pep land. Should we just get Katie on mic world. and she can break this down for us? She should be. Us? She should we be have on a whole mic. fourth mic here, Katie. Kate, you could walk us through the whole on thing. on the microphone. Tell us all about those pep days. Come nope. on. And she can right. talk to us about the dog. Fair That's enough. Great. Uh, yeah. So to come back to the original point I was trying to make is we're seeing a a trend where it's like choose your own adventure for the season. Uh, these athletes are going to be able to. The next couple of years are not going to really work very well, but essentially Matt Fraser is going to you know, win Dubai, qualify for the games in December. He has seven mm-hmm. months before the games yeah. start, and he's going to take a month and a half, two months off. Mm-hmm. Like He's going to have his off season after qualifying for the games, so he's going to have to have the, like, this, this sort of like lull in, the, in yep. the early parts of the season where a lot of other people are struggling, where he just kind of gets to chill. Yeah, and recover. And do we think that that's going to actually allow him? Do you think he's going to come into the games in better conditioning, better preparation, given the fact that he, there's no, there's he doesn't have to peak for anything else in proximity to the games. He doesn't have to peak for regionals or anything else. So we're going to see a more prepared Matt Frazier, assuming he takes a Dubai spot than we've seen in previous years. Or, and I was noticing, um, uh, I listened to your interview with Pat Vellner. He was talking about an interesting concept, which he said, you know, he was saying like, oh, you know, and seeing as how I never played team sports, this was the first time. I'm sure it's all uh, old hat to everyone else. But he's like, sometimes you play against a worse team and you play down to their level and then you get creamed the next week because you weren't in that competitive mindset. And I'm wondering if there's a disadvantage to not having all of that hype or all the the, the crucible of uh, regional competition immediately before to kind of remind you of that. I so. think the fire inside uh, Matt Fraser's belly mm-hmm. is not not going to go out yeah, yeah. not anytime i think soon. i think you're right um pat has a good point but for someone like matt i don't think it's going to be that big of an issue mainly because he has another competition mm-hmm. between now and the games and that's the rogue invitational that he's confirmed to go to mm-hmm. and so he is guaranteed essentially to have a qualifying spot by yeah. the time the rogue invitational rolls by yeah. which means that that is going to be his sort of like mid-season Mm-hmm. Uh, mid-season tune-up. Now, right? if he 
wins the Rogue Invitational, according to the official rule book, who's 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 whose spot will yes. it go to? Uh, according to the official rule book, it goes to us. It goes to us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Is the it because of, of this Letterman's it. jacket that I'm wearing? Is yeah. That one? Actually, it goes to Katie. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to Katie. It goes but to I'll sneak in. Yeah, it's uh, because the, of the jacket. It's not in the official CrossFit rule book. It's in the official Rogue Invitational rule book. Perfect. That uh, if someone wins on uh, either the men or women's side that already has an invite to the CrossFit Games and has a spot at the CrossFit Games, the uh, qualifying spot then goes to the uh, fittest Eastern Washington raised Alaskan born band jazz prep varsity. Uh, uh, cheer captain for, swimmer for, former re, former regional athlete former regional athlete yes with uh initials k a yes that's it those and and it's like it's a huge it's a huge field so i'm really proud of katie yeah, yeah. for putting together a, a did truly, she marry you just for the initials yes yeah because otherwise true championship performance exe- she would have been exempt she married me yeah. for the initials and so that my parents stop asking me whether i'm gay or not yes. so yeah that's yes. good that's good um, finally we finally did that yeah yeah Win win. Yeah, uh, so she's so my beard, so, and so I'm that you can finally, the games. so you can finally travel to Dubai. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. Now, now it's it's not as weird that all my closest uh, friends are just men that I hang out with and work out with yes. constantly. So just it's good. people who we all t- we it's only have conversations with each other while talking into microphones. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll drag Armin right. down to our level soon enough. Yes, yes. please do. Please do. Let's, and Armin, if you play thick, Armin, if you play down to our level, you're going to get creamed next week. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Noise. BBC. You know what I mean. Uh, uh, all right. Well, you know what? I I want to I want to end it here. Yes. I do want to say that after because now that Chase is gone, Armin's lost without anyone to talk serious CrossFit. Uh-huh. After I can see this. His I'm, eyes are uh, searching. He's like, I don't know where to make eye contact with while I'm saying this CrossFit shit because he knows ways. that Cliff and I don't care, <laughs> and we're like, totally. Yeah, Matt prepared mm. totally so we need some subject matter that we can riff on that involves <laughs> bodily fluids yes. that shouldn't be in certain places being in those places that's kyle's time <laughs> to shine mm-hmm. it's like a mad so what we need to yeah, we need to pick we need a, a place and we need a bodily exactly fluid. exactly <laughs> or, go on or we just need something about ai or or, uh, or technology really it's just we're at the extremes you know it's just it's got to be real sophisticated or all farts Anywhere in the middle, and I think fitness is somewhere in the middle. I, you know, I, I just, I don't, I can't hold up my end. So fair enough. Yeah, I do want to say though that uh, the AI conversation that we had, I've gotten multiple people messaging me on <laughs> Instagram telling me that the same shit is happening to them. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're se- they're sending me examples of being served, um, being served yes. ads on things that they don't talk about, but that they like screenshot and send other people today. Today, during this meet, during uh, when we were preparing to try, I was in a meeting and to and uh, you were texting me, trying to set up if we're going to do this this afternoon. You texted me and I clicked over to your text message and I clicked back over to Facebook and the ad that I was served immediately was the ad for the socks that say, "If you can read the bottom of these socks, Get then the you fuck out of then here. I'm watching my Hallmark movies or whatever the fuck it was." No way! I literally like looked at a text message from you and was like, "Huh?" And then I clicked back over and immediately those socks that you were talking about last week were 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 what I was looking at on Facebook mm-hmm. seconds later. Now, did you there was no Instagram conversation where you had a screenshot of those socks sharing with Kyle. No, there, this no? might be completely random. It could be completely random, but considering no. which which then this opens up uh, another interesting thing. I don't think we have time to really dive into it, but it's just another contributing factor to the ads are being served. Is it also based on the inf- the the types of ads that have been effectively serving other contacts in your address book who you've been texting with because they served you Christmassy ads and you paid for them so then maybe I'm texting with you and I'm now getting fed information from that I don't know I'm just putting maybe that out quit there. being their puppet arm and quit clicking through and buying their shit the po- I just I really needed to have my Hallmark yeah. Christmas movie sweater yeah. Jesus guys come on but that's an interesting way of uh, circumventing like people who don't want to be on the grid is it's just like if you do you text with someone who has a Facebook page then we're gathering information on you that's fucked totally, but totally fucked. accurate um all right. Well, I think that's about it. Yeah. Uh, you can find Chase at Chase504. <laughs> you sure can. Uh, you can find me at, at Mr. Kyle Bogart, the most sensual Instagram account on the internet. And you can find Cliff Dick Slap Bogart 
at Cliff Bogard on Instagram. <laughs> and you can find me at Arm and Hammer TV. I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who has bought the sand shirts and the oh. Arm and Hammer TV boner shirts. It's yeah. been uh, a great response. There's more coming in the pipeline. A lot yes. of other ways, um, you know, for you guys to be a part of the club and, and to join us. And Someone commented on an Instagram post of mine saying that, I forget, and I, I would I would totally shout you out if I could remember, but saying uh, I was wearing my sand shirt in the gym the other day and I was legitimately taken aback because I was like, people bought them and are wearing them in the world? So I want to see your, yes. sand picture, your sand shirt pictures. Send them to at Arm and Hoist, obviously, not me. Arm and Hammer TV. A- no, at Arm and Hammer and TV. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. Yeah, just, just, just put it... Uh, put it on Instagram, mm-hmm. tag me in it, send it to me because I probably won't see it if you just tag me in it. Just yeah. send send it to me or send it to yeah, just send it to me and uh, and we'll we'll start reposting it because I really would love to start seeing people wearing this stuff. It, it it's it's mm-hmm. been it's been really cool to see people support it and I, I I'm you know a hundred percent down to support people back. And every time you send a picture of you wearing your sand shirt in life, Armin will rub one out into a glass jar usually meant for drinking there you go so there's that, your mad lib and, and, and they'll and so, bodily fluid so it'll be measured by in the end he'll take a photograph of dried crusty glass jars there we, as we didn't have for, to end the show I, like this did i, I miss the setup I'm for this go ahead and shut that one down yeah. Yeah. Not, the, 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 setup, the setup the setup was, was my 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 pr- my prompt was katie not hammer answered. on mike everybody my prompt was not answered and so I had to finish out the, the, the prompt. Yes. The Mad Libs prompt. And thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Later. See you next week. Later.